All right, we are live. Happy New Year, Manoj. It's good to get our first one. Yeah. Mindful Men's year. Club event of the year in the calendar. We've just talking how we've, we've done over 50 already. So it's a, it's a nice little mini anniversary for us as well. We're coming up to two years of, of doing this as well. But as always, the turn of year is always a, a reflective time more than anything else as well. But what, um, yeah, as, 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 as you, if we look at those numbers, near over 50 sessions and, and nearly two years of doing this, what's, um, what's standing out for you? Uh, I think, first of all, Happy New Year to all of um, uh, the viewers listening and um, anyone catching it back on the replay on YouTube. I think there's so much things to reflect on. I think the biggest reflection is the realisation of we actually didn't have a plan, right, when we started off, other than just to create a safe space for men uh, to talk about topics. And I think as we kind of learned from the experience and matured from it, um, we got braver and braver. And what I mean by that is, is that we kind of promised each other that there's no topic uh, off topic, let's just say. So there's no such thing as a taboo subject because the whole point of it is to break down barriers of communication. So I think that would be the biggest, I guess, reflection. The fact that some of the topics I don't think um, we were quite ready for, to be, to be completely honest with you. So it took us out of our comfort zone, but I think we were quite grateful for uh, the viewers who suggested those topics because we learned a tremendous amount and then discussing it in our private Zoom with men, it uncovered some deep, really um, personal stories, right, that they've never shared um, with anyone. Like how many times have the men in our group said, I've never ever shared this with anyone, not even like, you know, within the family or the partner, etc. So I think, yeah, I think there's been so many to kind of summarize, but I think, um, I think, yeah, for me, it's that. What about yourself? What about yourself? Because it's an interesting thing to reflect and look back, isn't it? And two years is a bit of a journey. I, I think if we go back to the intention of where this came from was a place that that anyone can join. It's no strings attached, no judgment. And it's, yeah, almost like a forum where nothing is off the table. And I think we I, and, and I, I do want to acknowledge ourselves. I think we've done a phenomenal job of that in terms of some of the topics that we've covered. The one that we're talking about today um, on, on the Me Too movement and how that's impacted men. I think we've we've grown. We've definitely stretched our comfort zone. And, and, and I think collectively and individually, we've all gone to places that we didn't know that we wanted to take a look at or explore and learn and take an action on as well. And if we look at the, the lives that we've impacted and the people that we met, um a few weeks ago before christmas and, and the people that follow us online as well i think it's amazing to look back on what was initially an idea that we put together in costa coffee in, in harrow is now coming up to its second birthday and we're mm -hmm. thinking about Absolutely. not not stopping it but how can we just continue to spread the message and and have these conversations that really do matter that 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 men don't get to have mm -hmm. And definitely, no, no, definitely appreciate that and appreciate everyone's time and energy going, going into this um, group, sort of both behind the scenes and in the front. And I think um, a special shout out to the individuals, both men and women who have, I guess, um, been brave enough and courageous enough to reach out to us, even in private, to say, hey, guys, look, um, I don't, I'm not ready to be named yet, or, or, but can you talk about this topic? And then we always have that individual in mind, don't we? And we try and go sort of um, deep into that. And um, so keep those topics uh, coming in because they're not our topics, they're yours. So I think um, there's so many like topics that we've covered. We've done celibacy amongst men. We've done money mindset. We've done um, spirituality, going deeper into spirituality because that's just an endless topic, et cetera. Today's topic is about the hashtag me too movement um and then you know what led on to that um and then we understand obviously it's uh, from a from a from a female's perspective but the, the whole conversation was are we aware um uh, coming from a place of i guess transition from ignorance to awareness of what's happening with women out there and then is there any women that we're aware of in our lives basically um that have actually suffered that abuse or and then we went to, um, we took it sort of one step deeper in terms of, and this was a bit of a, um, uh, a stretched conversation, I would say, to put it, because a lot of the guys were thinking, well, what is appropriate? What isn't appropriate? So I'm not talking about the common sense stuff, obviously, about uh, the abuse. And the, everyone knows that, you know, what is right and what is wrong. But the gray lines of, let's say, if you're in a relationship, I think one of the guys mentioned, right? Um, or if you're dating, what is acceptable now? Like, is the female going to take it in a, in a different way in terms of the signals you put out? 
uh, one of the guys mentioned, um, um, which I thought was great, about awareness about if you're walking back uh, from a from a you know from a from a bus journey or a train journey, and it's sort of um, dark as it gets in winter, do you have that self awareness of making that feel more comfortable? So distancing distancing yourself from walking. Um, and just not even saying anything, but just putting yourself in the radar saying, hey, I'm safe, you don't need to worry about me, I'm going to carry on walking there and you can see me walk off because that takes a lot of effort and awareness, right, just to do that. But that's, but, but it's those little, it's little I things, guess, yeah, yeah, it's those little things that are so impactful that you don't need to talk about and you don't need to be the person, hey, I, sh- I sh-, you know, shout to the I did that, but that female would have definitely appreciated the fact that you did it because, we take it for granted as, as, as men saying, yeah, I'm just going to stroll 16 minutes, walk it from, I don't know, wherever for me, for example, Harrow Willstone Station to home. Um, and, and it's not the most savory place. Um, uh, I live in Harrow, by the way, so I'm not offending anyone in Harrow, but my wife wouldn't dream of going uh, to that station and walking at home um, in, in the middle of the night. So it's having that height of sense of awareness. And I think that then led us to the hashtag him too movement, right? About males speaking up. Um, about being sexually abused and, and you touched on it Raj about some famous celebrity names etc so I think all our topics are, are just about I guess learning from it educating from it and coming to a place of awareness so you can make the right choices whatever those right choices are um, if that makes sense so yeah I mean we're not experts obviously um, you know talking about this subject we'd love a female's perspective um, or, you know on this subject and happy to answer any questions but this was more about as men, are we aware of what the movement is, how it started, um, why it started? And I think, wasn't there some kind of interesting stat that, um, was it 2006 that Tarana Burke, when she first started it, who was a social activist? Yeah. Um, uh, and I think when it, the phrase was first put out on MySpace, there you go, who, MySpace didn't exist, right? So we're yeah. talking way back, there were like 12 million views when the Me Too movement the phrase actually was put out that's 12 million potentially suppressed women's uh, out there that who couldn't who didn't feel comfortable prior to that being put out saying oh actually me too me too me too and 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 it's almost like it's not like it never happened like oh, it unfortunately it happens every day it's just it's not talked about unless it reaches a place of a boiling point right like anything in life like when it reaches a place of boiling point you think why does it take someone to die or someone to be sexually abused or someone to yeah. be famous to then make it more prevalent to talk about? Like, it's just... Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we look at movements such as Black Lives Matters and as an example of how it... And this is stuff that's been going on for literally hundreds of years. But yeah, it's the awareness... There was almost a tolerance of it, I suppose, in terms of the way society was sort of knowing it that it goes on but kind of sweeping it under the carpet same with the me too movement and and the him too movement as well and it's like why does it need to get to that point where we start to have a conversation about this isn't right people shouldn't be behaving like this um or imposing themselves or using their power over other people in these ways that that suppress other people or actually manipulate other people make them feel uncomfortable and and, and degrade them in, in many ways as well and dehumanize who they are as well so it's yeah but uh, I mean, but i suppose that's the sort of the paradox isn't that in order something big needs to happen for mm. people to talk about it yet why wait for something big to happen before you talk about something that you all kind of know is going on when you look at when you look back in the way people speak about other people and the way, you know the way they touch other people and things like that that you kind of laugh it off and as banter but actually you forget that what may be banter or fun for you maybe extremely uncomfortable for another person to endure mm, and at I think, what point does that awareness translate into um, changed behavior yeah it's a fascinating um it's a fascinating topic because um, a couple of things that were mentioned on the chat uh, window you know on the on the private zoom is that there's definitely um an element of a generational gap uh, to play there um and there's also a cultural uh, a gap to play there and what i mean with that is that um, in our younger generation, you know, when we we grew up, certain things were kind of like normalized um, and, and we're embarrassed now reflecting that they were normalized, but we didn't know anything better, right, in terms of growing up. And, and that's anything from, I don't know, um, it could be like racial abuse to, uh, to, 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 to whatever, right? There was a wide range of topics we talked about. Um, 
but it's until it takes somebody to share their story, I, I would say, yeah, like history has shown us, like it always takes one person to speak out and it doesn't have to be somebody um, uh, of a prominent figure, but because we're a society of people who follow people, it's always the case where if it's somebody who's prominent, whether it's a Hollywood or Bollywood film star, or whether it's a political activist or whether social activist or whether it's um, a president or someone yeah. or star exactly that because it, it's something that someone that we idolize we respect or is somebody in the public domain we tend to kind of go beyond behind that and follow that movement right but actually if a thousand of us who weren't in the limelight shared our story would it have the same gravitas uh, and, and public exposure maybe not yeah. but it doesn't it it, it doesn't degrade that share and that communication, if that makes sense, like that. Why yeah. it's interesting. Like, why does it take everything to be in the public domain for it to be like kind of out there? Um, um, it, it almost questions a level of common sense. Like, you, like you know, stuff is going on, um, but I think it's also a case of choice, right? It's like everyone has a choice to do their part, whatever that part is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just fascinating that everything. Like, you can talk about Black Lives Matter. Um, you, you know, you can talk about the Me Too, uh, the Him Too uh, movement, uh, like why does it always take a, a boiling point scenario for it to kind of bubble over to then for people to sort of be, um, I guess, consciously aware of talking about it. It's like something is, to me, I guess, uh, and I'm a, I'm a football fan, you're a football fan, irrelevant in, in comparison to a football fan being taken over by um, a billionaire and then people kind of... Uh, um, up in arms about it. Or yeah, up in arms about it. To, to, to the going on. Six clubs in the Premier League. Yeah, exactly. Protesting yeah. about that during a pandemic. It's like, well, that's what's gotten you out. <laughs> yeah, but, but com like compare that to like some real horrific things that are going on around the world, right? It's like, fair enough. But then it just shows there's so many things in the world right now. It's like you're just so diluted with noise and there's so many but, things happening. Like you I can't possibly be aware of everything. But I suppose there's a general apathy to something until it happens to you. Yeah, exactly. Cause exactly. Because I, mean, I, I, I recall almost every year there's some kind of appeal because of some disaster and things like that or humanitarian crisis. And, and it's important, but I, I feel that sometimes you've kind of become numb to it or you hear it so often that it loses mm. power and it shouldn't you know because when you talk about suppression or people um being at the effect of abuse to, or some kind it's like that that's a big deal and and, it, and these are conversations that are topic one and, and i think there's definitely a lot of progress has been made for sure and there's mm. definitely more room to go as well so it's it 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 it, it does it and, and this is part of the conversation we're having in the group is like people's priorities change often and sometimes you can get distracted by a lot of noise versus actually what's really important and i think now more so than ever what we're seeing is that people are more aware of what you what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable around other people but also more of an understanding of what people from a certain background are going through or a certain gender are going through on, in their day-to-day -day lives and and what are some of the things that they just accept are going to happen to them which you think that shouldn't happen to anyone but you just kind of go around almost expecting something to happen that's a scary thought isn't it um i think that's a scary thought in its own right i think um uh, um yeah yeah i think it's that old adage of um unless it's unless it's like front and center unless it's like close to home you you are either consciously ignorant of it or subconsciously ignorant of it because there's many things right that happen around the world and we, we're not you yeah. know let's not um you know pretend that that that, that even me and you are aware of all, all of that we're not but it's a case of if you care enough about something um and you want to do something about it you can speak up about it and you can talk about it um but the, i guess the worst thing is you knowing something's happening and then you're playing ignorant about it etc because it's it, it it doesn't it's not in your geography or it's not in your i don't know not on your doorstep is it cir circle of concern or care for example right it's not on your doorstep exactly exactly but i guess that's part of what we're doing and um and i think um we don't, we, we don't want to go too heavy <laughs> too heavy no no if, if anything else I, I think you know just want to take the opportunity just to thank everyone for their support you know and come mm. out two years in a month and we're excited 
we've got the next quarter's events coming up as well. So check out the events section of, of, of this page and then click on um, Eventbrite for you to register um, and join us for the live as well. So the next topic we've got is feeling disconnected in a more disconnected world. So it kind of touches on what we were what we were speaking about. Um, and that's on the 22nd of January. On the 5th of February, we're, we're, we've got a topic on alcoholism, like what is alcoholism? What are people's understanding of it and the impact that it has? On the 19th of February, we have uh, reflections and realizations. So every four sessions, we will just have a, a quick check-in with where everyone is and, and it's almost an open agenda. 5th of March, we've got our impact on the planet. And I think that's a very topical conversation right now with climate change and, and what feels like a very unseasonably mild December. Um, certainly here in the UK as well. So we're, we're definitely seeing some impact on that. And then on the 19th of March, we've got Money Mindset. So we've got some good stuff coming up um, and really, really excited to, to kick off this new year. So uh, th thank you very much for all of our supporters and followers, etc. cetera. And uh, have a blessed weekend and keep the topics coming in. And, um, and yeah, catch us on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Thank you very much and happy new year to everyone. Happy new year. Bye-bye.